I'm going to go ahead and get started. My name is Gemma Howell. I work at NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and I am the lead for the Mobile Device Security Lab at the NCCOE, the National Cybersecurity Center of Excellence. I'm a first timer this is a, here at Identiverse. Uh, identity and access management isn't my specialty. I leave that up to the other great folks at NIST, uh, but I'm very excited to be here to talk about my project on mobile device security and securing the access from the mobile device to the enterprise and to the enterprise resources. So a, a little bit about me, I've been a NISTER for about five years. I started with mobile application development, uh, then I got into some research around application vetting tools. EMMs or MDMs, whichever one you want to call them now, maybe UEMs, uh, and mobile threat defense solutions. I also work on another project related to public safety, so that'll be first responders, law enforcement, fire, EMS. Uh, and that project is focused on uh, developing best practices and guidance for securing their mobile and wearable devices, being their body cameras, their headsets, their heart monitors, things like that. And beyond my, my mobile life, I, al I also work in the election security space. So I am the lead cybersecurity. Uh, I'm the cybersecurity lead for, on our voting team for developing standards for securing our voting systems. And that there is our mini mobile museum. You'll see some very old, we have the big brick phone, the Zac Efron phone. Uh, we also have the first Android and first iPhone there. Something cool if you want to come by our lab and see it. So I'm going to take the next few slides just to tell you a little bit about the center and what it's about. Uh, so our mission, I like to think of it uh, as the NCCOE is where we make the standards real. So it's under the Applied Cybersecurity Division where NIST is known for their documents, their standards, and best practices that they put out. And at the center, it's where we kind of bring those to life. So we actually take those standards, apply them, and build the architecture, put them put our standards to work um, and show you how to use them with commercially available products. And so we collaborate with industry innovators uh, and uh, anyone interested in trying to solve some of these cybersecurity challenges. And these here are kind of the principles that we live by. Uh, standards, of course, it's in our name. Uh, modular, so we we develop these sample architectures, but we realize that every organization is different. Everyone has their own business needs. So we build it so you can make substitutions, reconfigure to whatever meets your needs. Repeatable, we take you step by step through our process of what we did. So if you wanted to recreate this architecture and get the same results, you would be able to. Commercially available products. Uh, as I mentioned before, we want this to be real. So we, we have collaborators and partners who share their commercially available products and we use those in our architectures to build out these uh, cy cybersecurity solutions uh, to these problems. And usable. I know I keep saying we want it to be realistic, but it's true. We, we want it to be cost effective. We want it to be adoptable and easy to integrate into your own solutions. And then finally, open and transparent. Uh, NIST is all about putting our documents out for public comment, engaging with the community. We definitely want feedback to know, is this realistic? Um, have you used this in your environment? How has, can this help you? And uh, this is my last slide on the NCCOE, just kind of taking you through our process. So first, we do our preliminary research, define the problem, research different cybersecurity challenges, and then we assemble. So we bring everybody together, collaborate with industry, collaborate with academia, government agencies uh, to identify potential solutions. And then we get into the lab and we build it out. Uh, so this is where we're actually building that architecture, uh, using the standards, addressing those problems. And finally, advocate. So this is where we put it out for public comment. We put it out for feedback. Uh, we, we look into how others are using our solutions. 
And so this slide is kind of to speak to my work in the mobile device security lab and how it came about. So everyone has a cell phone, right? These three-year-olds, maybe even two-year-olds are reaching for cell phones now. <laughs> my, my grandmother is trying to figure out how to get on Facebook. My mom's trying to figure out how to FaceTime me. Everyone has a cell phone. And they do way more than just take a call or a text. And also there's an app for everything. And so with that, mobile devices are great in the work environment. It's so much easier for me to pick up my phone, check my emails, then have to take out my laptop, open it up, slide the PIV card in, type in my password, get to the Outlook. <laughs> we've, we've learned to, to move towards the ease of uh, using a mobile device in our workspace. But with that, it expands uh, the parameter of our enterprise, expands the attack, for, attack surface, and introduces new threats to the enterprise. And so here's just a list of some of the work that's come out of the mobile device security lab, but I'm gonna step through each one of these in my next slides. Uh, so 1800-4 is the very first practice guide that came out of our lab. And that was basically us looking into the basics. How do you uh, provide secure enablement for email, calendar, and contacts using the mobile device management solutions. And that, that was back in 2015, and those are some of the vendors that were involved in that project there. Another effort that came out of the mobile lab is the mobile threat catalog. So this is a reference data set of different threats. Uh, for each threat, will, they'll fall under one of these categories on the side. That's just a subset of the, the categories that you'll find in the mobile threat catalog. And those can be used to inform risk assessments, your threat models, and you'll also find mapping to CVEs, suggested mitigations or countermeasures, as well as uh, references to different articles of where, where these threats have, may have occurred. NISTER 8144 down at the bottom is a document that accompanies the mobile threat catalog that tells you a little more about the background, uh, how to navigate it, uh, and how it came to be. All right, and so here is where we are today. Uh, we, have, we are working through two builds. Uh, the very first one is focused on a corporately owned, personally enabled, uh, deployment of a mobile device. And since that very first practice guide, a lot of other additional tools have come to be. So application, different application vetting tools, a large variety of mobile threat defense tools, integration with uh, VPNs, and all of those kind of integrating with the mobile device management solution, which allows for monitoring access of what applications have uh, do you have access to? Uh, what applications do we want to restrict uh, on your device? It, does this device have malware on it? Do I need to cut off their access to our enterprise resources? So we, we with these, we identified a scenario, identified specific threats um, that may apply to an, org uh, an organization, and then we show how to use these solutions to uh, mitigate those threats in both, of these, in both of these solutions, which varies between a COPE and a bring your own device scenario. Uh, BYOD has definitely a different policy set than a, co a COPE device. And this year is just a, a diagram to show one of these, uh, a sample architecture uh, showing how the different tools interact with each other um, and what would be included in our architecture. So you'll see the mobile threat defense, the EMM solution in the center, and all the information kind of feeding to that. Here is a list of just some NIST mobility guidance. Uh, I'm not gonna go through these too much, but that very first one, uh, 800-124. As I mentioned, the NCCOE is where we kind of take our standards and make them real. So we reference that document uh, in this uh, architecture that we built in our lab for the past two projects that I just mentioned. 
So next I'm going to go through a few other projects at the center. Uh, disclaimer, these are not my projects. As I mentioned, I'm not the identity and uh, access management specialist, but I definitely want to share some of the great work uh, that's relevant to Identiverse. So we have 1800-12, which is a how-to handbook for, for managing derived PIV credentials uh, through an EMM. It provides uh, sh that strong authentication. Uh, and as mentioned in the previous talk, uh, avoiding costs and the cumbersomeness of having a, uh, a PIV card reader to attach to your phone. I don't know if cumbersomeness is a word. Just threw that in there, no one caught it? Okay. <laughs> um, uh, but also um, referencing 800-157 uh, derived PIV credentials, having that common identification standard and promoting the uh, interoperable authentication mechanism. And then we have the mobile single sign-on project, 1800-13. So as I mentioned, I work in, I also work with us, my public safety team at NIST, and one of my colleagues produced this document, 1800-13. And so the key thing about fire and law and EMS is that they have their own special scenario. And so they need immediate access to public safety data while trying to focus on protecting people's lives and properties during an emergency incident. So the key is trying to protect the confidentiality of their data, so health data, law enforcement sensitive information, other forms of PII, uh, while also giving them that immediate access that they need when they're out during an incident. And so what this document does is it shows how to combine strong authentication through multi-factor authentication, single sign-on to get that fast access, um, and also identity federation, which I like to think of as the interoperable aspect of authentication. So having the ability to authenticate personnel across multiple public safety boundaries. And then lastly, our, one of our upcoming projects, uh, Zero Trust. So NIST is working with the Federal CIO Council to develop uh, guidance for a reference architecture for US government networks. And at, at the core of this, it's to address kind of the five principles, or what I, I personally define as five principles. I'm not saying that this is how they define it, but you know, covering that uh, identity and authentication, uh, authentication part of it, so your SSO, your multi-factor, adding the different layers, so micro-segmentation to protect data, Devi defining these trust engines, uh, so defining the levels of access and then enforcing policy based on those trust engines. And then that continuous monitoring, so identifying any anomalous behavior, and then using that to either assign scores or update them. And just one last thing on that, uh, they'll be coming out with uh, the NISTER, I think sometime towards the end of this fiscal year, in September, if you're interested in that last one. And that's it for me. Any questions? Yes. In your uh, mobile security architecture mm -hmm. diagram, you, you put EMM you know, up front and center, kind of it's almost like a very heavy handed approach. There's been other sessions that have been going on the past few days that have been really light brushing um, device management. I just wanted to kind of get, get your thoughts on, on the two because you know, some companies are going to say, eh, it looks okay. And you know, traditionally, it's we want to make sure it's safe. Yeah, I think with, so the repeat the que repeating the question, I thought of it last minute. Uh, so uh, the question was, uh, what's my take on EMMs? Are they necessary? Um, uh, is that, does that pretty much cover it? <laughs> uh, and so what we, what we kind of emphasize, like I mentioned earlier at the center, is that this is how we suggest um, but we definitely understand that this, you, it may not be necessary. Uh, you may feel that you only need application vetting. Let me just make sure none of these apps are malicious on my device. Maybe mobile threat defense is enough. Uh, but honestly, EMMs, and it, I, they're what I know. <laughs> and it's the easy way, easiest way to 
from a from a management standpoint from the enterprise to kind of ha have those API plugins to apply those policies to devices. Any other questions? Easy crowd. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and say I cannot, but I definitely have the gentleman here who can, uh, because uh, as I mentioned, the, unfortunately, the Derived Pip project wasn't my um, wasn't under my project. But if you want to link up afterwards, the question was uh, some what are the some of the challenges with the Derived Pip uh, project, and uh, unfortunately, I, I don't have the answer to that. If I can definitely um, point you to the gentleman who can answer that. There's my contact information. If uh, anyone wants to reach out or be a partner at the center, we d definitely have other opportunities for work. So if you're interested, feel free to contact me. All right, thank you.